Good morning. We have come together within the strengthening fellowship of friends and family to praise God for the life of Marv Schoenemann, to share our grief with God and with one another, to reaffirm our faith in God's unfailing promises, to hear again God's promise of resurrection, and to commend Marv to God's everlasting care. Please rise. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Lord Jesus, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Christ has promised. I will not leave you comforted. Comfortless, I will come to you. You may be seated. Come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. 
but he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever These are the promises of God. In the stillness of this place, we turn to God who is our beginning and our end. From dust we have been made and to dust we shall return. With reverence, we gather to thank God for the gift of Marv Shoneman to us and to commit his remains to the elements with the confidence that neither life nor death can separate us from the love of God we have found in Christ Jesus. God hears the silent grief on our hearts, yet God takes joy, as do we, in the gifts that were and are life. God is faithful and will abide as light for us all, even as our grieving hearts are silent. Please pray with me. Gracious God, your steadfast love endures forever your faithfulness to all generations, trustworthy in all your words and gracious in all your deeds. Minister to us now in our grief. Speak to our hearts your word of comfort. Touch us into hope through the promises of Holy Scripture. Enfold us with the fellowship of all who share our sorrow. Fill us with the joy and peace that comes from above. In quietness and peace, we wait upon you. Now we join our voices together, praying the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today comes from the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 23. Listen now for the word of the Lord. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You're, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of God for the people of God. And our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapters 21, verses 1 through 17. Listen now for the word of the Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got to the boat, but that night they caught nothing. 
Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and he jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw, a char- they saw a charcoal fire there with fish in it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, friends and family of Marv Shoneman. We are gathered here today to celebrate his life and incredible legacy of love, of family, and friendship. Thank you on behalf of the Shoneman family for your outpouring of support. The gospel text this morning struck me as particularly fitting for Marv. It's a text where the resurrected Jesus is still dwelling with the people among the earth. He hadn't ascended to God yet, and he chose to tie up some loose ends with the people that he loved. The disciples were appropriately afraid. Their leader had just been crucified and they were in hiding. They were trying to figure out what it meant to be followers of Jesus in a world without Jesus. Jesus was trying to reassure the disciples that he had indeed been resurrected. He showed himself to them in a number of ways, but none more strange than this brunch on the beach. It's reminiscent of the feeding of the 5,000 and the story from the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus called the first disciples who had been fishing. Shortly after, Jesus was teaching from the boats and instructed the disciples to let their nets down for a catch. Simon was discouraged because they'd been fishing all night and came up empty-handed. But he complied, and the nets were bursting with fish. In John's text, the resurrected Jesus was hosting a beachside brunch, cooking fish over a fire, breaking bread with the disciples. He was creating, recreating core memories for them that had happened around tables mundane tasks like fishing, and calling them to remember their calling to discipleship, to tend my sheep and feed my lambs. Marv absolutely loved his family. There was nothing more important to him in this world than time spent with them. It was monthly birthday gatherings, family fishing trips on a houseboat, watching the kids play, and long car rides that were meaningful to Marv. These mundane tasks were some of the most impactful core memories that the family shared with him. Marv didn't have to be the greatest, he just wanted to be present with the ones that he loved. 
One cold and windy morning while out hunting with his grandson, Matt, Marv saw a buck and Matt wasn't too impressed with it. Matt told Marv to wait for a bigger one. Marv replied, I'm 87 years old, that one's big enough. <laughs> when Marv and Maynard were fishing, they'd often lose all of their lures and just sit there relaxing until someone came to replenish their supply. He loved riding in the passenger seat on long car rides and he never fell asleep. I joked with the family and I said, I need you to talk to my husband. <laughs> Marv would chat the entire trip and he believed that it was his duty to help whoever was driving to have company. And while Marv met his wife Kay at the surf ballroom in Clear Lake, Greg didn't recall either of them dancing for the many years that they spent together. What he was, what was recalled were seven day work weeks, with an unwavering ethic of provision for his family and community. Kay and Marv worked hard in their family businesses of cafes and grocery stores, and they shared the load equally. As a father, Marv was firm, yet devoted to making sure his kids had everything they needed. He worked hard, and he loved hard. His joy came from cherry pies made by his mother, Hannah, and later his daughter-in-law, Paula. He loved to watch kids play and enjoyed their presence so much. He loved reading. Marv used to keep a record player at the front of the store playing his old 33 RPM speed vinyl records of Johnny Cash in his office. And once they moved to the real estate business, he had upgraded to eight, gra eight track tapes, but still playing the same Johnny Cash tunes. He liked to say, geez, and ye gods when he was exasperated, and I'm told that that must have been a shared family expression. He loved family trips. As a World War II veteran, trained as a sharpshooter in the infantry, he served faithfully within the payroll department and was blessed to participate in an honor flight. He went with Lisa many times to Hawaii to visit Pearl Harbor, which was the springboard to his enlisting to serve in the military. It's these sacred moments of simplicity that Marv valued that reminded me of our scripture reading. When Jesus returned to the disciples following one of the most tragic events in history, he used simple elements, a campfire, fish, bread, and the unremarkable task of tending sheep and feeding lambs to remind the disciples of the sacred moments of simplicity that they had shared together. Marv lived a long and honorable life. Today is a celebration of that life. And it would also be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that no matter how long he was here with his beloved family, it would never be long enough. So we grieve together. But I compel you to honor Marv by sharing sacred moments of simplicity with the people in your life who matter to you. Take the big enough buck. Stay with your brother on the boat even when you're out of lures. Spend time breaking bread around your dinner tables with your family. Honor his life with these mundane tasks in your life and you will be astounded at the grace and love you will carry and reflect back into this world and the people around you. We honor Marv who took seriously his call to discipleship as he tended the sheep and fed the lambs. May he sit at the right hand of God and take his eternal rest. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Twas blind. But now I see. 
Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already gone. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Please join me in the responsive prayer for thanksgiving and comfort. Lord, you are our shepherd. You give us all we need. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us, you comfort us. Let your goodness and your love follow us all the days of our life until we live in your presence forever. Amen. Those who are not going to the graveyard service are welcome to go ahead and head down to the fellowship hall for uh, following the benediction for the meal. This blessing will also serve as grace for the meal. O oh Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work done. Then Lord, in your mercy, Grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.